Hello, everyone. This is Mike Saddam, and welcome back to the Crucial Talks podcast. Today, we have a great guest, Kevin Murphy, who has written a book called The Three Rooms. But before we get into our interview with Kevin, I would like to ask you for a quick favor. If you could, can you please subscribe to the podcast, rate it, and share it with anyone you think might get some value from it? This will help us continue to grow a community of people that want to understand what drives them and others. Also, if you could please visit www.crucialtalks.com and connect with me via email, LinkedIn, Twitter, or Facebook, I'd greatly appreciate it. The Crucial Talks podcast is a place where we believe if we want to understand behavior, we need to understand what drives people. And one of the topics we talk about is how the roles we adopt and the behaviors that go with those roles are how we make sense of the world around us and how we make decisions. In other words, the role that is important to you at the time is what you will use to make decisions. Today, we get to talk more about your behavior. Thank you, Mike. With Thank Kevin you for having Murphy, me on. The author of The Three Rooms, Change Your Thoughts, Change Your Life. Welcome to Crucial Talks Podcast, Kevin. Well, I spent 33 years with one firm you on you Wall Street. And how you got um, to this but it was place really six different firms that were merged that together. So many people. And through each of the mergers, you know, that um, I went through, you know, you learn a lot about yourself and, and you learn a lot about other people's behaviors, too, you know, especially during times of adversity. And we all have to deal with our own levels of adversity, both at, at home, at work. Um, I was certainly no different. And, you know, ultimately, I started to look within for some answers because I wasn't getting the right answers from other people. And, you know, <clears throat> it's funny, five years ago, this would have been a um, very unlikely conversation, but um, I started getting a premonition that I was going to write a book back then. And it included three doors, and one was labeled the past, and one was labeled the present, and one was labeled the future. And then those three doors ultimately became three rooms. I kept describing the place behind the doors where our thoughts go. And probably what was most interesting to me was that early on, I wrote down 10 chapters to the book, and those chapters never changed. And over the next three years, while I was commuting back and forth into the city, you know, I kept writing about things that I saw and heard you know, in the form of short stories, and I would fill them into different parts of the book. You know, you know, this goes into the past room or, you know, this is talking about, you know, us moving from, you know, thoughts moving from room to room, you know, from the past to the present or to the future. And I would literally write on, you know, on the railroad, on the subways, you know, if I was in the gym on the treadmill in the morning, as ideas came to me, you know, I would write them down and eventually all the chapters were filled in. And that's when I realized I, I needed to publish the book. I love how that story kind of worked its way out because you're you're actually sitting. So, so this is what I'm envisioning. You're you're sitting on a train commuting to work. You're watching things going around you in life, and you're writing about what you see. But it's fitting within this concept of exactly what you have for what this book. So you're actually taking <laughs> real life, true to life stories that you're seeing happening around you, and that's what made it into your book. Well, that is awesome because one of the things we talk about here on the Crucial Talks podcast is the fact that we as people are storytelling animals. That's why we're so successful. So I love that about your book that you actually use true-to-life stories to explain this concept of three rooms. Now, can I ask you, why did you use the concept of three rooms to explain our own behavior? Now, I know you had this thought that you're going to write this book. and You had the thought, hey, there's a past, present, and future doors and then those transitioned into rooms but why does that well, I, help i think it might have originally been coming from the fact that i was always so curious as why to did you why use that to help us some people our who had what appeared to be so little you know in the terms of you know possessions and they always seem so happy and other people who you know seemed like they had so much you know appeared to be so unhappy or miserable and, you know, when, what, so what really makes us happy? And I said, you know, I read a number of books, you know, on that. And, and ultimately, I think that's kind of where, you know, the premise of the book 
the three rooms came out, you know, because the premise is really that our experience of life is not based on on what we do for a living or what we have, our possessions. You know, it's based on what we think. And our thoughts can only be in those one of three places, either the past or the past room, the future or the future room or the present or the present room. And whichever room your thoughts are in determines your experience of life in that moment, because of course, our thoughts can go back and forth from the you know past to the future but it is it is in that moment and so the key is to monitor your thoughts and in order to monitor them you have to observe them and it is that active observation that separates your awareness from your thoughts and so you're no longer at the effect of them and that awareness is that consciousness or that divine consciousness that all the mystics talked about that we want to connect to so the simply being aware of where your thoughts are connects you to that universal consciousness. Well, and I always love talking to different guests because what you say and what past guests would say is always different. There's always a different spin to what they're trying to do to help people but it always comes back to people being people and what makes us who we are and so what i love about what you said is the fact that what we experience is based on the thoughts which is based on these rooms you talk about and one of the things about people we always say here is that we can construct our own realities like you and i could be standing next to each other Experiencing Absolutely. the same physical and, things, you know, because it is our thoughts, and, and I could even say, because of you know, our the, thoughts. the tagline for the book is change your thoughts, about change your life, but it's really more change your emotions and change your feelings and change your life, because we all want to feel good, and it's all about how we feel, but your thoughts have the biggest effect on how you feel, but it's exactly what you're saying. It's really, you know, our emotions don't really come from just our thoughts, you know, or what we see and hear. They're really based on our perception of what we see and hear in the physical world. You know, or in other words, they're based on our interpretation of what we see and hear. And so that, you know, gets to, you know, you know what we believe and kind of what you're talking about, how we can kind of construct, you know, um, things that we see in our lives and how we feel, you know, is based on our beliefs. And, you know, it starts with our thoughts and, you know, being aware of them. And so when we talk about, we can talk about going into each different room and, and how they make you feel. But the bottom line is if you're thinking about something in the past and it's not making you feel good, you know, it's something, you know, that you see and you're observing, you say, well, that's causing me to feel this way. That's really not the case. It's, it's your in perception or your interpretation of what you're seeing that is causing you to feel a certain way. And so we basically are, are creating that ourselves. That's awesome because we do understand here on the Crucial Talks podcast that people make decisions not based on rationality but based on feelings and emotion. And so I love how you said that. I also love the fact that you said it's based on our perception because I've asked people this question before. Do you believe what you see or do you see what you believe? And I think that really comes down to those feelings you're talking about and how we perceive what's going on around us and being able to change our thoughts. So when we talk about thoughts, I know you cover this in the book, but I was hoping you'd give us a couple of little little piece of information. How do we as people train ourselves to actually be the observer of our thoughts and recognize which of these three, three rooms we're in, the, the past, the present, the future? How do we actually do that? Um, you know, just to say, OK, let me monitor my thoughts. Um, it's 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 really difficult, but it really starts with, you know, like you said, how you feel and if we're if we're not feeling good, if we're not feeling positive emotions, then we know our thoughts. You know, we can track that back to our thoughts. Like, why am I feeling this way? And typically, then it's you know to to then put your thoughts into three different buckets just makes it so much easier to to separate them and identify how you're feeling. And the whole purpose 
know, is to make it easier. Because I think, you know, in, in today's society, you know, we see there's so much information about, you know, living a consciousness minded lifestyle. You know, and we hear about, you know, mindfulness and living in the present and, and being in the now and, and people really understand how important it is to monitor your thoughts, but we just don't do a really good job. And the purpose of the three rooms is to just make it simple. Just put your thoughts into one of three places. I'm not feeling good. I'm feeling, you know, anger or resentment or bitterness or something. Typically, then it's about you thinking about something in the past and it's your perception of what has happened. And likewise, if you're feeling stress or, you know, or, you know, fear or something about something in the future that has yet to happen, you're typically thinking of a worst case scenario. But let's just go back to the to the past for a second, which I call the past realm, and that and what we you were just talking about the perception of it, because we can see something, and we can witness something, and and it doesn't cause a negative emotion. If we just saw you know two people talking, that wouldn't cause a negative emotion in us. But if it was someone that we knew that was talking, all of a sudden, wow, okay, there's you know there's Charlie. I know Charlie. Look at he's talking to someone else, and that would that wouldn't cause too much, but If you then, let's say you had an argument with Charlie yesterday, and now you're thinking, you're looking at him talking to someone else, another friend, you're saying, I know Charlie's talking about me. I know that. And you know what? He's saying bad things about me. Now you're getting mad at Charlie. And now you start saying negative things to other people about Charlie, because if, if, you know, he's talking bad about you, you're going to talk bad about him. And it was all your perception. But you're convinced, you know, you know, he was talking bad at you. You're still mad at him from the argument. And now every time you see Charlie, you're getting more and more distant from him because he's saying bad things about you and you're saying bad things about him. But what if in that conversation that you saw from a distance, he wasn't talking about you? Or what if he was actually was talking about you and he was saying good things about you? Everything changes then. But your perception of what you saw caused negative emotions in you, and it was real to you. And so that's what you believed, and that caused how you feel. And how often do we you know, say something like eventually, then you see the other person he was talking to saying, hey, I know you were talking to Charlie. I know he was saying bad things about me. Don't listen to him. And the person goes, oh, no, he wasn't talking about you. Or, oh, no, actually, you know, he said, you know, yeah, you came up and, you know, he said some good things about you. And then what do you say? You go, oh, oh. Oh, okay. And then you kind of let it go. And now the next time you see Charlie, instead of feeling anger or bitterness, you actually feel warmth again. And like, hey, Charlie, how are you doing? But it's all based on our perception of what we see. And that's what we have to realize, knowing where our thoughts are. Like everything, we can't help going out into into the world and seeing and hearing all kinds of things. But what we do have control of is how we interpret those things, how our thoughts, you know, interpret and perceive things to happen and understanding how we perceive everything has a direct impact on how we feel. That's a great point. And I love that story because we do talk about on the podcast here, we talk about the power of in groups and out groups and how we visualize other people. And I love that story because you're like, Hey, if we don't know those people, it really has no impact. But if we know them, if we have a connection to them, it can actually impact our perceptions and our feelings pretty significantly. So what I'm hoping we could do is move into, and I know you talk about this in the book, but this question of where am I? This this question apparently has some power behind it, but how do we – I mean it's a simple question, right? It's three little words. Where am I? But how do we actually activate the power of that question? How do we make it so it's useful to us day to day and moment to moment? Well, I think that's that's your reminder to, you know, be aware of your thoughts and how you feel throughout the day. And so, you know, there's the iconic question of, you know, who am I? The people, you know, on spiritual paths, like, you know, who who am I? That deep question of not who am I, the, the person that everyone else sees, but the, who am I on the inside, the, you know, that only I can see. But really, you know, the person on the outside that everyone else sees is always changing. You know, we're doing this job one day, then we're let go, we're doing a different job. And, you know, that's, you know, our bodies are always changing, but that inside, that inner being is, is always the same. And, but what does change a lot is 
in, from a standpoint of where am I or where are my thoughts, those are constantly changing. And as we were just talking about where your thoughts are and your perception of what's happening constantly has a direct impact on our emotions. So even if you start the day, you know, someone may meditate in the morning and, and feel really good and center themselves. And it is, it is a tremendous practice. People should do meditation much more because it is the absence of thoughts and it brings you back in alignment with, with, you know, with your higher self. And that's some, a place you want to be. But as soon as we go out into the day and we start seeing and hearing all different things, just in the coffee shop, getting our coffee in the morning, and then someone cuts us off. And all of these things that we see in here start to pull us out of that you know, present room, if you will, or that feeling of tranquility that maybe we got from our you know, meditation. And now all these negative emotions keep start coming up. And all through the day, they go and they build and they build. And Unfortunately, if they can build from not only day to day, but week to week and, and month to month and year to year. When people are constantly mad at people, you know, we all know people who have held grudges and they're still mad at someone from 10 years ago. You know, or people are worried about the future and they're constantly stressing about the future. And we can talk about that later, but that's, you know, getting stuck in the future room or getting stuck in the past room. So we constantly get triggers throughout the day to bring us you know out of the present moment and into these feelings of negative emotions and so we need triggers to bring us back into that presence and back into the present realm and there's no simpler you know um, question to yourself and where am i or just where are my thoughts and just which room am i in and just asking yourself that question and if you think about just being able to answer the question you know, where am I or where are my thoughts, you know, or better yet, which room are my thoughts in? The answering of that question, in order to do that, you must be aware of your thoughts. And once again, that awareness is that consciousness that we all want to tap into. And now all of a sudden you're, you're grounded. You, you have this presence about you and you're, you're no longer at the effect here and it kind of gets to you know what you were alluding to earlier you know which i really think is one of the main messages of the three rooms is that you know we do have control over how we feel and it all depends on whether we let what we see and hear in the physical world determine how we feel inside so this difference between there and here the the difference between what room we're in I love the fact you you talked about. Hey, we we have this question that we can ask us that acts as a trigger to kind of kind of center us, bring us back to where we need to be, so that we can discover the difference between where we're at in these different rooms. So, how do we actually discover the difference between being there or being here? Well, you know, being there, you know, or let's just say focusing on there or here is really just focusing on everything you see and hear letting that affect how you feel or being here it means starting from looking within and how you feel and aligning with you know good feeling thoughts because we can think anything we want and if you said someone okay think of something that you really like doing and someone says oh okay or think of a great you know it it can be a memory of the past that makes you feel good. And you, so you start to feel good. And you say, how does that feel? And you're good. Okay, so we have the ability to make ourselves feel good. And we can kind of stay in that place. And when we come from that place, look within. We say, okay, you know, I, I do feel good. And you start to now observe the world from that place of feeling good. Now, all of a sudden, you're not looking at people the same way. You're not looking at people from the, you know, from the perspective of, of judgment, you know, and, you know, and, um, you know, or criticism or blame. And you're just, you know, enjoying and going through enjoying the day. So it's really the looking within is simply starting with how you feel and focusing on positive thoughts rather than letting everything else you see in here, you know, affect how you feel. I love that that concept because kind of what you're telling us to do is, well, you're letting us know that we are in control of our, our own lenses. And depending upon what lens we're wearing at the time, we'll have control over our feelings, which will have control and, and dictate some of our emotions, which 
obviously lead to the decisions we make and how we go through our day. That's really some great advice. I, I love that concept, and I like the fact that with a simple question – of where am I and understanding that we can discover the difference between there and here in the moment, we do get to change our lens. We do get to change our feelings. So as we kind of wrap this up, is there any other information you'd like to give us that maybe we haven't covered here, but that somebody can use right away today that could change how they feel and how they go through their day? Well, I think one of the is um, – belief in ourselves and, and the use of words and you know typically what pulls us you know into the past or future rooms is the word not you know i am not good enough for this or you know i am not going to be able to do that and those cause negative emotions and the the concept of using you know just the i am instead of i'm not you know getting rid of that not is a big help but even bigger is if we imagine a picture something we would like in the future and we think of what can be and come from the place that I already am that or I have already achieved that. And that is what really helps you create your future because people say, well, you need, you know, you can't always be in the present. You have to plan for the future and being in the future room and stressing about, you know, what may or may not happen in the future is not the same as creating your future in the present by imagining you know, what you would desire and what can be picturing as if it already happened. So changing the words, I am not to, I already am. And that is really empowering. If you say it a couple of times and you come from the place that I already am, that which I aspire to be, it, it, it already, you're looking backwards from a place of already having achieved it. It's very powerful. Yes, and I think a lot of the listeners understand that concept because another thing we talk about all the time is appreciative inquiry and the role language plays and conversations play on creating that future reality. But what I love about what you're doing is you're talking about it from a level of the individual person where appreciative inquiry kind of talks about it as an organizational level or system level. It still works for the individual, and that's exactly what you're saying. So it's it really is a powerful tool that has been proven not just by people like you that have written about it and things like that, but it's been proven by science. It's been proven by um, discovering how successful people have gotten where they are and successful organizations have gotten where they are. I love this conversation we've had about these three different rooms, how they play a role in your lives, and how you can actually use them to not only change how you feel, but ultimately build yourself a future that you want, that you can imagine for yourself. So, Kevin, I just want to thank you so much for being part of this podcast. And I'd like to ask you, what's the best way people can get in touch with you? Because I know they're going to want more information. So what's the best way they can get in touch with you? And what can you help them with? I think um, getting in touch is uh, the website is uh, www.thetherooms.com. And the three spelled out T-H-R-E-E. -E. Um, or my email address is just Kevin at the three rooms dot com. And, and the book is available on, on Amazon and Barnes and Noble and, um, you know, most major places. And and I think really the whole goal of, you know, what we like to help people with is is to just understand how important it is to monitor their thoughts. And it's not as hard as they think. And it's something that we can do every day all day long and it can really change the way that we feel and, and therefore change our experience of life well great thank you very much kevin and again that's www.the3rooms.com i'll put a link to that in the show notes and his email is kevin at the3rooms.com the book you can't miss it says the three rooms blue with black at the bottom you've got the three rooms there the middle one is lit up it's really easy to find uh, i would suggest to everybody that you should you should pick up this book. Take a look at it. There's some really good information in there that works. So thanks for listening, everyone. If you would like to listen to some other episodes about individual behavior and decision-making, episode 43 with Marcus Ogden and Transformation, that's a good one. Episode 41 with Maya Kazizik and Positive Perspective is another great one. And then the one I did, episode 37 on four steps to self-transformation, that'd be another one you might be interested in. So again, I wanted to thank Kevin 
And I wanted to ask you, if you have a chance, I'd love for you to visit the Crucial Talks website at www.crucialtalks.com and connect with me via email, LinkedIn, Facebook, or Twitter. If you need anything from me or would like me to speak at your organization, please reach out. I love connecting with people. Also, if you could please share the podcast, leave a review, and rate it, it would help us tremendously because it will help other people find these great interviews just like the one we had with Kevin. Have a great week, and remember, if we want to understand behavior, we need to understand what drives people.